Hello everyone, it's Shane Kanto, your Way Slam reviewer, and I'm here to review The Continental. And this is the first spin-off of the John Wick franchise, as this is a three-part mini-series over on Peacock, telling the story about how Winston Scott got his job as the concierge, like running the the Continental, and Albert Hughes of the Hughes Brothers directed two of these episodes, and then Charlotte Brandstrom directed the third. This, hmm, this set a bad tone for John Wick spinoffs, because this basically didn't learn the right lessons about John Wick, I feel like. John Wick really works because of the crazy world building, which this series does capture. You capture the, like, the insane amount of different people involved in this society. I do feel like the Continental tried way too hard to incorporate way too many people into it. And where the John Wick films, like, will introduce these other groups of people, but in, like, basic ways, they're there to, like, be window dressing and cool ideas, but they're not focuses. The series tried to utilize its insane amount of runtime, which I think the first episode, an hour and 25 minutes, an hour and 20 minutes, and then an hour and 37 minutes. So, realistically, there was only enough content in the series for an actual film, and it probably should have been just a film. And they tried to half as incorporating all these different characters and these different sections of society. The ones that really did actually stand out, they had uh, Katie McGrath played the adjudicator, so like the adjudicator at this time, and she had a very interesting look. Very John Wick. It worked. Everybody else felt very bland and not interesting, and even Winston which, nothing against Colin Woodle, who plays Winston in this. Obviously, he's supposed to be a younger version of him. And, you know, he might not be as cool as Winston is by the time he gets to be where he is in the films. But how do you get somebody that doesn't even capture at all the charm that Ian McShane brought to that role? So, like, Winston is very boring in this series, despite the fact that he's one of the most memorable supporting characters, and it's because of the casting. Realistically, I only felt like one bit of casting here really, really stood out, and it's Mel Gibson, who plays Cormac O'Connor, who is the owner of the Continental in New York at the start of this film, and he is the antagonist of the series. He hams it up. He's memorable. He's extremely charismatic. Whatever you want to say about Mel Gibson as a person, which is not great, but as an actor, he's a very charismatic actor, and he plays this despicable character really, really well and has fun with it. Nobody else seems to be having fun with their roles, except for maybe McGrath with the Adjudicator. Nobody else feels like they're in a John Wick series. The film really try the series really tries to capture a mood and the time period with an insane amount of needle drops, which I imagine half the budget of this series probably was just how many <laughs> how much money they had to spend for the music. The music is great. I love all the music. It's my kind of music, but all of it felt so on the nose in terms of like, hey, look what time period we're in, like. It's trying to do the Forrest Gump thing, where you just throw as many pop, uh, popular songs from that era in. It works in Forrest Gump, and it doesn't work in most things. And it really didn't work here, except, like, you know, somebody like, who me, like me who loves all the music is going to be like, I'm enjoying the song, because what's going on on screen isn't as interesting. There are some fun action sequences. Most of them happen in the third episode. This did not have a whole lot of action for something that's based off of John Wick. Which is really concerning because why do people watch John Wick? For the action. The action was nowhere near as good as the action in the films. So this just really felt like a really hollow, substandard prequel to John Wick. 
without having any of like the creative juices that brought John Wick to life. So unfortunately, this is a pretty decent miss for me. It's way too long. This should have if they were really doing this, it should have just been a film, like a Peacock original film. Trim it down, lean it up. Honestly, most of the important stuff happens in the third episode anyway. Just bolster that out. The last John Wick movie was three hours. Like, this could have just been the three-hour movie on Peacock and trimmed it down a bit. But those are my thoughts on The Continental. Let me know what you think, and let's talk some TV. But thank you, as always, for tuning in and supporting your Wasteland Reviewer.